Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves at a sentencing hearing where a Sovtard has accepted a plea deal. And this sentencing hearing is just set up to make sure that he knows his rights and everything like that. And, uh, well, he tries to come up the works even further by uh, pulling out some of his Sovtard tricks. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Audio is connected now, so we are on the record in the matter of the people of the state of Michigan uh, versus Robert Joseph Matson, file number 21-20513-FH. Today's the date set for sentencing on this matter. We are proceeding today uh, partially by video conference uh, and, and partially in person. Uh, Mr. Daly is here in person. Mr. Daly, would you like to place your appearance on the record? James Daly, appearing on behalf of Mr. Manson. And we also have uh, Mr. Stevenson with us from the uh, Michigan Department of Corrections. And, sir, you are Robert Joseph Matson, correct? Hello. Hey, uh... I'm a living flesh and blood man, attorney for uh, a public officer or statutory citizen judge. I'm a living flesh and blood man. Yeah, you douchebag. You're definitely living, but you're still bound by the laws of the country that you reside in. So what's your point? All right, you are the living flesh and blood man who's known as Robert Matson, correct? Uh, attorney for uh, Robert Joseph Matson, which would be the all caps name. Nobody uses all caps in their names, dude. That uh, fictitious BS about all caps representing corporations is just that fictitious BS. And if you want proof of that, just drive down any street in your town, look at a store like Walmart, and you'll notice that not all the letters are capitalized within their name. In fact, it can vary from corporation to corporation, so it's not exactly universal. It's almost as if somebody's been lying to you. Judge, there was uh, something um, that I was trying to talk to my attorney about <clears throat> that uh, before you let me out of the hospital, I was in, in the hospital or the jail. I was uh, I was experiencing a lot of pain and trouble. The jail was not treating me properly. Uh, after I got out of the jail, I went um, to the hospital and they, they hurried and rushed me to Toledo Hospital where um, I almost died. Had I not been released from jail when I did, I would be dead in that county jail. So what you're saying is that uh, you wouldn't be able to survive any amount of time in jail or prison or anything like that, which is the reason why you're going to go full soft hard on the judge and act like a complete ignoramus. Um. All right, Mr. Manson, we're here for way. your sentencing hearing today. Um, I'm not really able to address issues of medical treatment while at the jail. Well, I was just um, saying that so there's, not, a, there's Mr. Manson, Mr. Manson, yes. Mr. Manson, don't interrupt yes. me, please. Uh, the, the medical treatment that people receive at the jail is not within my purview, and I'm not going to address that today. So, well, uh, I was just saying I was going to address my Mr. Manson, Mr. Manson, Mr. Manson do not interrupt me, please. Have you had an opportunity to read and review your pre-sentence report? I did with the uh, secretary uh, for Mr. Daly. Have you had an opportunity to discuss your pre-sentence report with Mr. Daly? I haven't had an opportunity to discuss it with him. Um, I did with the secretary. Okay. The secretary right. got a hold of him. Mr. Daly, if you could just let me allow him to finish his answer. What, what were you saying, Mr. Matson? 
I did with the secretary. She, uh, I talked to her over the phone and told her everything looked good. And um, I believe Mr. David was supposed to get back a hold of me. I don't know if he got too busy or okay. something else happened. All right. Thank you, Mr. Matson. Mr. Daly, you wanted to say something on that issue. Yes, sir. My secretary contacted him with regards to the PSI. He said everything was right. He had no complaints about anything. I still tried to contact the bag to get an answer. All right. So what we'll do is have, if Mr. Daly, if you'd be willing to step out into the hallway, we have an iPad out there um, that we can log into the Zoom session. And but I don't think up. he needs that. He's ready to be sent to you. You have any other questions, Mr. Madsen? Uh, yeah, Judge, I think the report is making a big mistake here. I've not. Um, I, I appreciate I'm not, that, Mr. Madsen. I'm not doing any of my rights or immunities. I'm not a statutory citizen. I, I am sovereign. <coughs> I'm not somebody who's under the uh, jurisdiction. I've never signed anything to Mr. Madsen, if you don't stop talking, your device. Statutory citizenship would indicate a issue that occurred in Puerto Rico back in 1917. So that doesn't really count for you, dude. And uh, of course, if you haven't given up all your uh, rights and privileges as a U.S. citizen, then you are indeed a U.S. citizen and therefore not sovereign. And besides, you live in the United States, therefore you are subject to the jurisdictional justice of the United States. So can it and learn to live with the consequences of your actions, such as taking this plea deal that you already agreed to, dude. Okay. I've discussed all of these issues with you before. Okay. And well, I, you, I object, but I'm Mr. Madsen, you this is your right. I've muted Mr. Madsen's device because he won't stop interrupting me. Mr. Madsen, what I'm trying to tell you is that we have discussed these issues before. You've raised those issues. I've ruled against those issues. And ultimately, you pled guilty of your own choice uh, to the uh, controlled substance possession of uh, narcotic less than 25 grams. And so I'm going to sentence you on that charge today. If you'd like, I will have Mr. Daly step into the hall and you can have a breakout session with him so you can speak with him about your um, pre-sentence investigation report. If you have questions or things that you want to talk with him about um, regarding that report. So I'm going to unmute your device now and I want you to tell me whether you want a breakout session with Mr. Daly or not. Hello? Yes, we can hear you now. You want a breakout session with Mr. Daly? Um, well, I've tried to talk to Mr. Daly before. Uh, I mean, Mr. about Manson, this. And... Answer my question. Do you yes, want sir. a breakout session with Mr. Daly or not? Your Honor, I just, I, you, you're going to do what you're going to do. I mean, I've tried to talk to the courts and reason with the courts. I mean, if you're going to sentence me today, then I just file for an appeal. I'm uh, in objection to anything that happens today. Um, I was under duress when I took the plea due to my life was at stake. Mr. Manson, please answer my question. Do you want a breakout session with Mr. Daly or not? Mr. Daly hasn't been much of help for me, Your Honor. So I mean, That is course... not an answer to my question, Mr. Manson. Please answer the question. Do you want a breakout session with him or not? Sorry, Your Honor, I, I, it just ain't been doing me any, any help, no justice at all. I mean, I've already said what I had to say. If the sports is going to set me today, then that's what they're going to do. I don't agree with anything that's going on today. I'm sorry. Um, it's just my life was at stake when I had talked to the courts. Um, all right, Mr. Manson, Mr. Manson, please stop. Yes, sir. So you refuse to answer my question about whether you want a breakout session with Mr. Daly or not. The law. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't want Mr. Manson, Mr. Daly stop as my attorney. Yes, sir. The record. I place Mr. Matson on mute again because he's continually interrupting me. Mr. Matson, what I'm trying to explain to you is that you have the right to discuss your pre-sentence report with your attorney before the sentencing. I've asked you four or five, maybe six times now, whether you want to have the opportunity for that breakout session and you won't give me a simple yes or no answer. So what I'm gonna do right now is ask you to ask Mr. Daly to step into the hallway 
uh, we'll set up that iPad. I'm going to put you in a breakout session with Mr. Daly uh, in order to uh, make sure that I comply with the uh, with your rights to have that breakout session. Um, so at this point, I'm going to set that up, whether you want it or not, um, so that we have complied with that requirement. Judge, I just had a repeated him from the conversation you already had. I'm prepared for sentencing. All right, Mr. Matson, you've now uh, had an opportunity to discuss the pre-sentence report with Mr. Daly. Is that correct? No, he didn't want to hear me, Honor. He just told me that he was here to get me sentenced. I tried to talk to him about things. I tried to talk to him before we even went to court about things that was going on uh, with um, my life and me about dying and, um, as far as being in, in incarcerated in jail, which he didn't ever try to help me out because if he would have, he would have did an investigation and known that I was in court and I was wrongfully put in, uh, in jail. I told him I'm, I'm not a statutory citizen. I'm a constitutional, uh, citizen. I mean, he don't care to do anything to help me. All he cares about is just helping you guys out and get me sucked into the system. Okay, dude, you're contradicting yourself just like any other soft hard does. You just admitted to being a constitutional citizen, which basically means you are a U.S. citizen. You are not sovereign. If you were sovereign, you would be your own entity, your own country. But you're not. You still have the same rights and privileges as any other citizen of this country. So you still get punished just like any other citizen of this country if they've committed a crime. Deal with it. And it's wrong. All right. For the record, uh, I did provide Mr. Matson with an opportunity to with Mr. Daly in a breakout session. Uh, Mr. Matson. Yes, sir. Uh, satisfied with Mr. Daly and the advice that he's giving you? I'm not satisfied with the advice he's giving me, no, sir. Is that because he didn't want to appeal to your own confirmation bias and wanted to pour some cold water on your uh, fantasy world? I mean, is that why you weren't satisfied? I'm sure that must be why, because that little fantasy world you live in was spoon-fed to you by a bunch of scam artists who uh, take great delight in fleecing morons like you. Do you wish to explain or challenge the accuracy or the relevancy of any of the information that's in your pre-sentence report? Um, the, the, the stuff that's in the pre-sentence re report is uh, directed to a um, statutory um, citizen. I'm not a statutory citizen. I'm a constitutional citizen. You cannot be a constitutional person and a statutory person at the same time, Your Honor. Well, I do believe the Constitution would challenge you on that, considering that there is the Tenth Amendment, which grants the states the right to create laws that are not covered in the Constitution. And therefore, since you live in Michigan, you are subject to the statutes, which, according to Black's Law Dictionary, are laws. So... You are subject to the jurisdiction and the laws of the state you reside in. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And even the 14th Amendment will tell you that, you bloody freaking moron. And it has to be constitutional rights, which the court's designed to protect rights. So I was asking you, Judge, are you working as a banker or a judge today? Um, uh, I mean, there's no nothing 
to show that there's even a um is, is, I mean is there anything to show that there's even a contract between us? I mean, is there well, the closest thing to a contract in this case, dude, is the uh, plea agreement that you signed, and that's uh, the whole reason why you're here for the formality of uh, the acceptance of the agreement. I mean, that is your contract right there. Well, what constitutes as a contract when you're dealing with the government anyway, So, but still, you agreed to it. This isn't a contract it's, issue, Mr. Madsen. Well, it's a criminal law issue. You know, for the crime to exist, to there today. must be an injured party. Is there an injured party? I mean, uh, uh, in, in the Constitution of Rights, uh, Sheriff Vistas Cohen, 40, 481 F945. Uh, in order for there to be a crime, there, should, there ought to be an injured party. If there's no injured party, there's no crime. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, maybe you should actually try reading the case laws that... Uh, you cite because, well, no party, no injured party or anything like that is a part of this case. That particular case you're quoting is of a man who was audited by the IRS and refused to show his tax documents and therefore was fired from his government position. Okay, here's the deal. You need to stop being a crayon munching softard and accept responsibility for your actions and stop using case laws that are irrelevant to what your situation is. Otherwise, you're going to continue to make yourself look like a complete ignoramus and lose in court cases going pro se, you bloody moron. All right, I mean, Mr. Madsen, you're, you're arguing the basis of your conviction. Again, you pled guilty um, to this charge. What I'm asking right. you is whether, Mr. Right. Madsen, yes, Mr. Madsen, what I'm asking you is whether uh, you'd wish to explain or challenge the accuracy or the relevancy of any of the information that is in your pre-sentence report. So is any of that information inaccurate? Inaccurate as far as the person that um, reports they're trying to sentence an all caps name, and it's not me. I'm a living flesh and blood man. You're after a fictional person. Wow, we've got a real legal scholar on our hands. I mean, like I said before, nobody uses all caps names to denote a corporation. Hell, not even a, a corporations universally use that. I mean, like I said before, have you ever taken a look at all the signs on your streets and see uh, the occasional name that is all caps, the occasional name that has a mixture, the occasional name that, uh, well, ju it's just really stupid argument to begin with. It was a talking point created by scam artists to fleece morons like you, and you try to use it in court, and guess what? The uh, judges see right through it and know that you're a complete freaking Kool-Aid drinking moron. All right. So with respect to that argument, uh, what the court will say is that uh, I will leave the information that is in the pre-sentence report uh, in the pre-sentence report and uh, deny what seems to be some kind of a request to uh, modify the pre-sentence report uh, based on an argument that uh, doesn't state any cognizable legal theory uh, about a difference between uh, Mr. Madsen as a human being and Mr. Madsen as something else. Uh, so the pre-sentence report will stand. As well, you, Your Honor, you never even explained to me Mr. what the jurisdiction was. I tried from the beginning to get the jurisdiction right. of the court is. I'm going to mute Mr. Matson again because he continues to interrupt me with uh, a, a line of argument that I, I don't even know what to say about it. It, it just is, uh, it, it's not a legal argument at all. Uh, it is. 
some kind of fanciful belief that there's a difference between Mr. Matson, a human being, and Mr. Matson as some other entity, which uh, is not recognized by the law, and uh, I'm not going to entertain it any further. Uh, Mr. Daly, does the pre-sentence report disclose any prior convictions in which there exist any known constitutional defects? No, Your Honor. Uh, the probation officers calculated the minimum sentencing guidelines in this case to be from zero to nine months. Do you agree with that computation of guidelines? I do. Your Honor. Right, well, thank I you. do. Thank you. Uh, before the court passes sentence, Mr. Daly, is there anything you'd like to say on behalf of Mr. Matson? I've had the same uh, conversations with Mr. Matson the courts had. He's never wanted to talk about this case. He's always wanted to talk about what he perceived are constitutional issues. Uh, he pled guilty, he knew what he was doing. I, I do know that. I, I'm, I'm prepared to, uh, to complete the sentencing now. All right, uh, Mr. Matson. in a moment, I'm going to unmute your microphone and I'm gonna give you an opportunity uh, for allocution. That's an opportunity to say anything that you'd like to say on your own behalf before the court passes sentence. <laughs> Did you hear that? You soft-tart Kool-Aid drinking moron. Basically, what he's stating is that, well, there is no valid argument right here, that you did not present anything that was of value because it's a non-existent argument so far as the courts go. So you failed. You couldn't get your point across because you listen to other idiots, the other sovereign citizen morons who thought they knew the law. So in summary, everything that you thought you knew about the law and tried to argue is a bunch of freaking bullshit to begin with. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Is there anything you'd like to say on your own behalf? You said that. Does I can say anything that I wish before sentencing? You can. I'm sorry, sir. You can. Okay. Yeah, yes, sir. <clears throat> your Honor. <clears throat> I, I mean, before I took that plea, I told I told Mr. Daly that I wanted to um, sit there. I wanted him to um, sit there, get the the cameras for the um, courts to prove that. I was at the court the, the day that um, I was put in jail and said that uh, that I wasn't in the court for um, a contempt of court. He said, and I told him I wanted to f uh, fight my case, but I had to be up because I had medical issues. Mr. Daly said, that's fine and all, <clears throat> um, but if you stay here and you fight this case, they'll keep you in here for a year fighting your case. You will not be um, let out of um, jail. Uh, Your Honor, I couldn't do that. I was in major pain i would have died in that jail my proof is within the doctor's records in the hospital i had a serious condition which would have left me dead within a week from the time that i took the plea the following day after i got up my <clears throat> wife was um killed in a car accident because everything's been going downhill for me ever since and now this with the courts i don't feel that i've had a fair chance with the courts ever since i even started with the court because the courts has not proven jurisdiction to me. I've not written any uh, papers out agreeing in the contract saying that the courts can have any kind of jurisdiction over me. <clears throat> I have not rel relinquished any sovereign immunities that I have. <clears throat> I just don't feel like there's uh, been anything fair, which is not going to be with the new, uh, court system. I mean, I've tried to say I'm not a statutory person who is uh, within your jurisdiction. Uh, if anything, I'd be considered constitutional, but I'm not even under constitutional laws, but I will use them if I feel necessary as a constitutional living flesh and blood man. There is no injured party. The only injured party would be the state's laws, which the state cannot be the prosecutor, the injured party, and the judge. 
There's nothing right. The, the court case either had been dismissed or moved to a higher court. And I wasn't going to sit there and be put left in, in, in jail to fight my case for a year. I would have been dead. I'd been stupid not to sit there and just agree with um, a plea that I didn't even agree with in the first place just to save my life. I don't think that's fair at all. It's not right. There's nothing but wrong here. It's injustice, not justice. Uh, everything that guy just says is bullshit. Thank you. Yeah, that's a nice speech and all, but uh, you couldn't even get the uh, case laws correct. You can't argue with the damn. I mean, the guy up there just told you your uh, arguments were a bunch of BS to begin with. I mean, you're pretty much done, dude. You got no leg to stand on. I mean, the requirement for equal protection, I mean, okay, yeah, treatment, I mean, there's, uh, there's form zero, uh, five, uh, point zero three three three. The terms are binding you and me together, judge. There's nothing even sitting there stating that. I mean, <clears throat> you, you, you can't you can't be a constitutional person and a statutory person at the same time. Either you're one or the other, and as constitutional rights is known in form um, number ten uh, point zero zero two. And then your context, <clears throat> you have um, your statutory privilege uh, form would be uh, 0.0503. If you claim your uh, privilege, uh, statutory privileges, you swear to constitutional rights, which I'm not doing any of that. The definition of a public <clears throat> jur jurist is therefore deception, which is in form 0.5.014. I've not had time to get my own paperwork together due to the hospital <laughs> when I logged into their um, system because my um, Wi-Fi wasn't working properly on my computer. I couldn't drop my own paperwork. <clears throat> I've been in nothing but severe pain. I've been able to move around and do much of anything for myself. I mean, I just don't feel that anything here uh, is being done today is, is right. And it's not, and, and it's not within the constitutional or the bill of rights it sounds like you don't know that the bill of rights and the constitution are the same document in fact the bill of rights is essentially the first 10 amendments on the constitution and uh, it's the 10th amendment that has put you here because it gives states the rights to create laws that are not covered in the Constitution because the Constitution can't cover everything that, that goes on. I mean, good freaking grief. You really should go back to elementary school and learn the Constitution to begin with, you blockhead. Because, well, if you would have known something about the Constitution, well, that wouldn't have helped you out in this case anyway, because you'd still be a bloody freaking moron. It's common law would uh, permit. And if I ask you if you're working under the oath of office and, or as a baker, you don't answer that. You don't tell me which jurisdiction we're under. I mean, these are all important things. I mean, for me to even provide an intelligent argument for myself, I have to know these things. Is guaranteed in the Constitution. I didn't even ask for this attorney. You assumed that I didn't know the laws and that I needed an attorney. Well, it's clear that you obviously need an attorney because of all those lead paint chips you've been consuming have been really melting your brain down into a pile of unidentifiable mush. I mean, come on now. It it it's part of the U.S. law. Uh, law that you can have a, an attorney assigned to you. I mean, that's just your rights right there, dude. I mean, how can you argue anything if you don't even know those basic rights to begin with? I mean, good freaking grief. I mean, just accept the plea deal and get it over with.
the attorney has done nothing for me but sit there and try to feed me to the system. Uh, the only system that I know is God and God's laws, Judge. If I sit there and swear an oath, because I'm not, I'm not, I've never taken no oath to any governmental laws. I'm not a public officer. The only person I, the only one I've ever taken an oath to is God Almighty Himself. There's only one lawgiver, one creator, one judge. And it's God Almighty. That's who I recognize. For me to sit there and <clears throat> agree to anything um, more than that would be me sitting there violating my, the laws of my God. All right. In determining the appropriate sentence in this case, the court has considered the seriousness of your offense, your history, the principle of proportionality, the statutory penalty, the cost of confinement, the report and recommendation of the probation department, as well as what's been said on record here this morning. The criteria and reasons for the sentence are the nature and gravity of the offense, the discipline appropriate to its commission, deterrence against repetition by you and by others, vindication for the law and the protection of society. Uh, As I indicated, with respect to these uh, sovereign citizen or, or whatever the other arguments uh, you're making are, we've dealt with the jurisdiction issue in the past. I've ruled on that at least uh, on at least one occasion, uh, probably multiple occasions, and that ruling is not going to change. Um, you will have appellate rights if you want to pursue those. Uh, you're welcome to uh, do that, but uh, you have pled guilty in this case. Um, you indicated during your guilty plea that uh, uh, you were not under any uh, threats or promises or anything like that. Um, and you indicated that it was your own choice to plead guilty. So the court's going to proceed with sentencing in this matter. Uh, the recommendation from your probation officer is that you serve... Uh, one year of probation with credit for uh, 29 days that you've served on this case. And that is, I think under normal circumstances, that would be an adequate recommendation with, he's gone. All right, we will, uh, I'll give him a minute or two to see if he logs back in. I'm not exactly sure when he dropped out of the meeting. And I have no idea if it was something he did on his own or if it was a connection issue. So we'll give him a couple minutes. For the record, I think it was 918 that I noticed that Mr. Manson was no longer in the meeting. Looking for Mr. Madison. He was on the zip. Okay. Thank you. That was remember I I called him at He wasn't at that nervous at the hospital. They don't know anything about what he's doing. There. Right. Okay. 
Hello, Robert Matson there, please. Okay, who am I speaking with? Okay. All right, thank you. This is Mike Stevenson, probation. Okay, he had he had sentencing this morning. He just left the uh, set. Judge, I just spoke with a female at the number that he gave me, and she claims that he is at a heart doctor appointment at this time. That's what she claims. All right, uh, so it has been, I think, five or six minutes now. It's now 924. Uh, what I'm going to do at this point is I have a uh, another hearing to move to. Uh, I will continue to monitor my waiting room to see if he logs back in. Mr. Daly, free to go back to your office, and we'll give you a call if uh, he does log in uh, again to finish the sentencing. Uh, if he doesn't log in and we haven't heard from him by the end of the day, what I'm going to do is issue a bench warrant. Um, he does have a previous failure to appear in this case, uh, so he's not entitled to the 48 hour grace period. Yeah. So if we don't have any contact from Mr. Madsen by the end of the day to finish this sentencing, I'm going to issue a bench warrant for his arrest, and uh, we will finish the sentencing from the Illinois County Jail. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Daly. Well, I'll keep you updated on this guy. If I see him again in the, any time in the near future, I'll let you know if he was issued a bench warrant or not, but it seems kind of stupid to just bail on that kind of issue right there. I mean, they'll prove how much jurisdiction they have over you, dude, when they uh, find you and, uh, well, extend your sentence because of your stupidity. At any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.